Now let me switch gears. You've tapped the great Dr. Ling to help develop a major healthcare initiative. We want to talk about it. Let's take a look at your new PSA that describes the way you're looking at radically changing medical research. Watch this. We must build technologies to cure disease. Build an MRI that can detect pancreatic cancer at a microscopic level. Diagnose disease with a single drop of blood. Restore sight with a prosthetic eye that communicates directly with the brain. How? How can we do this? HARPA, the Health Advanced Research Projects Agency. Dr. Lang, tell us about this agency. What are your main goals here? What can you address in terms of medical challenges that we face today? Well, I think that uh, what we can do is leverage some of the remarkable people and research that's already going on in the United States. There already is fantastic work going on. What we haven't done very well is transform them into being clinically uh, useful to people uh, in a timely manner. Th this is the key thing, efficiency and accountability. So the thing that, uh, the agency that I came from, which was DARPA, was a defense agency. And of course, the obvious applications there are for national defense. But very clearly is, that's building capability. And so really uh, what we're talking about when we talk about cures for diseases, diagnosis for diseases, we're talking about building capability into science. And so what you want to do is take foundational knowledge that is just beautifully uh, uh, supported by, by, the, by the U.S. taxpayer and build that into a timeline-driven, milestone-driven approach that would allow efficient uh, translation of this work into capability. And that's what we want to do. We want to cure diseases. We want to diagnose earlier. These are all capabilities. I love it, which is why you proposed the HARPA to the White House. Right. And, it, and, and people have said to me, you know, what a great idea. Why didn't we do it 10, 20 years ago? I mean, the fact of the matter is it, it's... It's, it is a wonderful idea, and they know how to do it. He actually knows everything about DARPA because he worked there. He, right. he was a project manager, and he was also a, a senior person. He is, one of his projects was the prosthesis, the, 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 uh, the arm, the shoulder and the arm oh. that for, for people have lost their, you know, lost, lost their, their limbs. limbs. Yeah. And that, is a pro that was one of his projects. Uh, and it, the detail involved, the, the amount of time and effort, the kinds of people that came in, 100 different contractors to make this thing happen. Your, your initiative, Code Purple, honors your late wife. Right. Obviously, Suzanne Wright was an incredible woman. I knew her. She's got an incredible legacy uh, as a fighter and advocate for those battling pancreatic cancer. Characterize the progress you've made there. Well, the, that, the, this is the progress. If we can get uh, a HARPA established inside of health human resources, which is no reason why we can't, yeah. then we have a mechanism. We can attack early detection, for instance. Uh, 80, Eighty-five percent of the people that are uh, diagnosed are stage four. In other words, there's wow. no, no hope for them. If we could get just 10 percent improvement in that, that's 5,000 people would be saved. If we get 20 percent, we're mm -hmm. 10,000 people right off the bat. Uh, and, and uh, you know, there's no, this is the most dangerous of all the cancers. It has the, the highest mortality rate, 91.5% die, mm. you know, Incredible. very quickly. So, Dr. Ling, let me ask you where you see the biggest opportunity in terms of making change. Is it pancreatic? I mean, we, we've seen some real movement in fighting cancer, right? So where are we in that fight right now? Give us the good, bad, and the ugly. Well, so the good is that there are brand new uh, therapeutic approaches. The biological targeting is, uh, is a breakthrough. There's no doubt about it. But again, how can we get these things efficiently into the clinic to help patients like uh, Mrs. Wright? The, the whole idea here is, is that there's really no one area that is... A, um, is, a, is, a, is a specific area that's great because if you think about it, there's 8,000 known diseases. There's only 500 treatments. Wow. That gives us 7,500 yeah. opportunities. Yeah. And of those 500 treatments, how many of them are cures? Not treatments, mm. cures. The diabetic does not want to be a better treatment. They want to be cured of it. They want to go right. and have whatever they want to eat. How, on important, and on. how important is technology in all of this? Hugely important. Huge, right? I Huge. Mean, yeah. Huge. Why not ride that crest, ride that wave? It is. What's great about this approach, a Harper approach, would be, as I said, timeline-driven, milestone-driven, is that you can bring in these other communities. Any, real quick, any, any news on Alzheimer's, on, you know, autism? I mean, really moving the needle on the brain. Uh, well, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of hope uh, in, in this early research, but again, this is all going to require translation into capability, and that's not really being done as efficiently as we would like. And you've done so much on autism, Bob. Thank you for that uh, with Autism Speaks. Great to see you both. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you so for much, Dr. Ling, Bob Wright. Good to see you.